Hey guys, you Duke and Dude here. This time we are looking forward to this upcoming live stream regarding Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. This is going to be very interesting. Um, from what I can tell, you know, since this is exactly from the Tokyo Game Show, obviously it's going to be completely in Japanese. Now, I am at this point using the game trailers uh, live stream at this point because uh, I'm not really sure if this is going to be dubbed at all, if there's going to be like a, some kind of a translation. Because, well, obviously, coming from Tokyo, obviously it's going to be completely Japanese, so we don't really know if there's going to be a translation, like, explaining in detail as to what's going to happen in, in the uh, next uh, few minutes. Regardless, let's see what's going to happen. Let's, let's see what we're, uh, we're up, to, up against here. So, Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity. I mean, I still enjoy Hyrule Warriors. Uh, I haven't played it in a while. But, uh, you know, since, uh, since I still have the Wii U, and I got it right here, I've been playing a lot of the games in the library, and I've been really impressed uh, with certain games, some more than others. But Hyrule Warriors as a whole, pretty sweet game overall. I still want to question it because um, I question the canonicity, I think that's the word, that's the phrase. Because, you know, the original one is more a spin-off, and it's not, it's not exactly part of the storyline, part of the actual canon. This one, on the other hand, despite it having the same gameplay mechanics, it's still going to be... Like, this is actually going to be canon, right? And it takes place, like, 100 years before Breath of the Wild. I mean, I understand it in a sense that they're explaining the wars, like, that happened prior, because you, you can't really explain a previous Zelda game like without talking about certain wars because most of the games and most of the Zelda games are pretty much like dungeon exploration I mean that's pretty much like the whole uh, foundation of Zelda ever since like the first game but since they're taking this um, this direction it's gonna be focused more on battles so we're gonna see a lot of warfare based on the uh, Dynasty Warriors mechanics so, uh, yeah, I mean, we got 30 seconds to go. Right now, T minus 23 seconds. Live stream directly from Japan. Let's go. Let's see what we're up against. We are at a 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Basically, the trailer that we saw um, when the game was revealed, uh, I think nearly a month ago, like a few weeks back. It's been a while. The one on the surface, Hyrule Warriors, is really like um, really flashy with all these explosive battles. But the core, the core gameplay elements are pretty repetitive in that sense. So there are some people that are kind of against it, others that actually defend the Dynasty Warriors style mechanics. But they're being implemented using different techniques based off of the Breath of the Wild. Uh, we got the Rook here in action, Rivali in action. I'm more curious about the story than the, the gameplay. And by the way, to me, the main selling point of Hyrule Warriors, the music. Hands down, the music. Okay, let's see what else we got. Hmm. What else have we got? Position myself better for the camera. There are times that I wish I'd learned Japanese. I'm all, I only know like certain phrases here. 
Basically, she's welcoming us to the show. If I understood correctly, he's the producer at Koi Tecmo, the game. Then he's the producer. What is the producer of the other director, I guess? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, very interesting. Very, very detailed. I wish I knew Japanese, I swear. From what I can understand here is that they're probably discussing like the um, behind the scenes elements of um, Breath of the Wild and how I'm guessing how like uh, Nintendo approached them to um, to make the, the prequel Age of Calamity at this point. So this is more like a discussion in general what the game is going to be about but uh, we'll just have to wait until they show like uh, any particular cutscenes or other details so they're gonna get underway yeah at this point they're just explaining I guess uh, part of the lore about the previous game and how uh, Age of Calamity is supposed to explain like the backstory like during the wars with the four champions here the Rook, uh, Rivali I, I, have a, I have a bad memory here sometimes. Mifa, Rivali, Daruk. Ah, I keep forgetting the Gerudo. Urbosa, Urbosa. There we go. So, yes, I guess they're technically saying that these are also going to be co playable characters. I think we kind of understood that from the trailer. Here, I guess, showing the uh, techniques and abilities, like the. Let's see, some of the explosive attacks, probably from the, the remote bombs that you can use in the game. As well as these like freeze frames uh, techniques that are used to like, you know, stop time. You can tell obviously by the, um, by the gold chains that are surrounding the characters. And those are like very two really important uh, elements within uh, Breath of the Wild. Freezing time and, exp and remote bombs. So I, I guess just by the uh, the images and you're kind of explaining those two things and how that's going to be implemented in the game here. You know, speedrunners really take advantage of the uh, the time freezing mechanics just to uh, literally go like full on like Tao Pai Pai from like Dragon Ball where they just grab an item, you stand on it after like multiple hits, and then when time like is restored for that object, that thing just flies and becomes like an instant rocket for you. Heh! <laughs> Subtle! Yeah, the scarf is pretty symbolic. For those who uh, aren't aware of it, Link, in the original game, he actually wore that scarf. Uh, let me find that game. Link in the original game actually wore the scarf, so kind of like a, a nod to it. Finally, some gameplay footage. Obvious battle mode here. Mm, they need to figure out what that minus button is supposed to be for. But basically the melee weapons here are just Y and X from what we can see here. Let's see more enemies. Uh, I guess sub bosses in the process. You can wipe them out instantly. Yeah, the game's heavy emphasis uh, pretty much on, on battle is mostly focused on how many KOs you can make. How many kills. And it's always about protecting certain bases and just go running from point A to point B to protect the other base before before the, the those bases fall. So basically you're just a, the, the one-man army. The game always focuses on making the, the main character be like the strongest of everyone. 
まあ文字通りもそうしてるというような話になっていますで今年前の世界なんでこういったあのハイラルジョーがあ本当に大きく見えてますねはい綺麗な状態のはいありがとうございます Those creatures are such a pain あもあるいや、sorry, that's my phone ここにあの広場みたいなとこもあるんですね<笑>そうですね、あれがちょうどバトルが開始地点だったとかちょうどはい、式典場にあんまり。うん、interesting. It's this is like、uh, yeah, that's like literally it, it does take place in the Breath of the Wild world. So they were just showing off like some of the locations that actually exist within the、uh, the original game. Hmm. Okay, a slower spin attack compared to the original. Yeah, this is a sub boss at this point. The main objective is just to、uh, pretty much like wipe out the entire hexagon, constantly hacking and slashing, and then just go for like a final blow at the end. Yeah, projectile attacks are very useful. Okay, go for like a final blow. Boom, there we go. So the king is pretty much giving you orders as to what to do. Like, protect the, protect the castle at all costs, basically. Or keep an eye on the northern, the northern path, the southern path. Or, or, like, we're being invaded in the southwest. It's about covering the bases, in that sense. Again, final blow. So, yeah, once you actually see the same attack over and over, so it's, it's obviously、uh, kind of repetitive in terms of gameplay. Just wipe out all the enemies in each fort, each base, try to reclaim it as quick as possible before、uh, things get overwhelming. Now, one thing that kind of worries me about this is that, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind seeing this at all, but if they somehow make the transition that later Zelda games will end up taking this, this gameplay style, then that's when I kind of question things because. Zelda it is more about dungeon exploration, not about huge battles. But we'll see. I mean, it, this is probably like a、um, once in a lifetime thing that's actually canon. We always want to take the,、um, the Legend of Zelda franchise to different directions. Hence why it's so steampunk, futuristic in, in that sense, like Magitech, if you will. I was initially kind of against it, but I've kind of like grown、uh, accustomed to it. Ah, the little bot here. Ah. Asking for help. So that's how he technically got the Shiga Slate. That must have been Impa. The giant towers forming. So the little creature came to life when,、uh, when the tower popped up. Hi. I'm getting such a Star Wars vibe from this little guy. It's like he wants to be C3PO.、Uh, R2D2, I mean. Or, or BB8. Taking down enemies left and right with the bombs. The remote bombs are very useful in the game. Especially considering how, like in Breath of the Wild, it's a game where your,、um, your main weapon can shatter instantly. You know, be it a sword, be it an axe. Even your bow and arrows can, can shatter if they're overused. 
And, you're, and it's more about survival. This one, I don't know if they're going to apply the same mechanic though, but it's very likely. So the bomb, the, the remote bombs are literally your best friend in this game. Very useful in like worst case scenarios when you're, when you pretty much exhausted all of your main weapons. What, you're gonna set up like a mega bomb to this guy? A bomb barrage, basically. <laughs> bomb usage in the original Hyrule Warriors was even crazier. You would throw like a, a dozen bombs at, a, at an enemy. <laughs> this one they kind of toned down the bomb usage. So this is, yeah, essentially like the, um, I guess the intro part of the game, obviously. Because we're inside Hyrule Castle and we're trying to prevent uh, all these, uh, I guess, moblins, hokoblins, or whatever they're called nowadays. We're trying to prevent all these enemies from just you know, just reaching the, the castle. This little plaza here. I guess Link knows a charging star. He's been playing Marvel vs. Capcom. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's the shield uh, shield dash, apparently. So yeah, the bar up top is indicating how many uh, enemies are left in the uh, in the area because... Yeah, it, it, it's about pretty much, you know, recovering the bases. And you can actually use the ice techniques, which I forgot to mention before. But without water, which is kind of curious. Because normally for you to like, you, for, for, for you to make ice blocks, you do need uh, water of some kind, like a water as a base. Here you can somehow do that like without the use of water. Hmm. And this place has been cleared. God, when well, they throw those clubs. Ugh. Clear a path. Man, rapid fire. Oh, an arrow action. Oh, now you control the other girl. Yeah, that is Impa. Confirmed. It's Impa. Impa this. So yeah. Uh, Japan just loves their ninjas. Now every time when I see someone do like any any type of technique like that, it's automatically Naruto for me. Naruto Boruto. I've kind of outgrown Naruto over the years. I'm more into Dragon Ball, but I mean, I get the the references, the techniques, the, the cultures, the substitution there. I mean, let's be clear. This looks awesome. The multiple jutsus here. Oh, those little... Those, 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 pardon my language. Those freaking Wiz Rogue like characters are annoying. If I'm not mistaken, I think she also uses her hat as a weapon. It's just funny how they made uh, Impa look a lot younger and cuter this time. Because she's always portrayed as like a very adult character, sometimes she's portrayed as an old lady, depending on the games. But now she looks a little more innocent in that sense. Like pure heart. See, before and after. See, you notice how she looks a lot more, um, a lot more 
youthful, more adult in, in, in that sense. Whereas you, you see her like as an old lady, and she's like a scrawny old lady, like she somehow shrunk. I'm curious as to what else they're going to reveal in this, um, like in this presentation here. So more trailer footage. This was a new trailer. Yeah, at this point, it's just Zelda witnessing how her uh, her kingdom is collapsing. The bond with Mifa and Young Link at this point. Daruk the Brute. And when I say brute, I mean brute force. There's Urbosa. It's funny how fans just go crazy over her now. I'm really digging it so far. That's uh, Rivali. At times he kind of reminds you of Falco. I'm guessing that's the king talking about something about the future of Hyrule as a peril. From the little Japanese that I can understand. And I think we're good. Maybe they're kind of debating whether, like, they just want to see more of this content. But maybe that's like that's all they can show today. But they want to see more. From what I can tell, the uh, the lady here is like very impressed overall with the game, and she's like really looking forward to probably sharing like her own like opinions and views regarding the uh, what she just witnessed. I guess they're yeah. At this point, they're showing the characteristics of what the characters are going to be using like uh, during the early stages, the early levels. Here we can see Link. I'm guessing yeah, he's using a wooden sword and a wooden shield. Maybe that's supposed to be like a nod to the original Zelda game, because in the original, in the original Legend of Zelda, which I sometimes call Zelda Classic, uh, yeah, the old man pretty much gives you a wooden sword so you can just walk around and just, uh, you know, slay enemies here and there until you get later upgrades. So it's dangerous to go alone. You know what I mean? Though I'm not sure if it's a wooden sword or a rusty sword. It looks wooden. It looks more wooden than, than rusty. And the outfit... I'll, I'll say this. The outfit looks like a combination of like the original Breath of the Wild mixed with some of the armor that appeared in the, uh, in the uh, original Hyrule Warriors game. Oh, what's this? I'm guessing that's like sp additional marketing, like a custom play that you could have, like as decoration. Not bad. Looks neat. It could be like a collectible. I wonder if you can put that like on the refrigerator, like a, like a magnet. Oh, little keychains here, the little uh, bots here. <laughs> yeah, I forgot those names. It's, it's been a while since I played Breath of the Wild, so I forgot the names of those little robots. The, the little guards. 
Ooh, a giant blanket here. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much like using well, like uh, to like skydive your way down. That would be pretty cool to have at home. But I'm just wondering, is the scarf for sale too? Yeah, the game itself is going to be released on November 20th. I'm guessing that's 7,120 yen. So, I'd say retail maybe like around 70 bucks. Give or take. Rated Zero B. Yeah, Zero is the, uh, the Japanese ratings word. B rating would be like the equivalent of a teen rating. Ooh, a treasure box, like a, like a bundle. This must be a pre-order bundle, I see. Yeah, you get the keychain, you get the blanket, and you get like a, a special portrait of a uh, Beige of Calamity. It's like, a, it's like a sort of a pre-order bundle if you're interested in that. How come the scarf is not on sale? Where's the scarf? Any other additional? <laughs> this bonus feature with like loot with link with the ladle and the wooden uh, wooden shield. Yeah, that's been circling since the game was uh, was announced. It's kind of amusing how uh, the spoon is going to be a weapon at this point. Like obviously like a nod to him uh, constantly cooking meals. What's he gonna do? Gag you with that thing? So the uh, wooden sword would implement like the uh, the beginner weapon, and this would be like the equivalent of a joke weapon. Kind of like the equivalent of attacking someone with a fan, and the fan being completely useless. But it's just up for comedic purposes. Missed opportunity to actually sell the CD in a, in a separate uh, in a separate case. Missed opportunity because the. The Warriors games have really amazing music. I mean, I love the Hyrule Warriors soundtrack. I guess they're discussing this uh, this part because making like a Legend of Zelda more of an action focus, action game in a sense, compared to the original ones, which were more puzzle oriented, dungeon crawlers in a way. I I'm guessing they're just talking about the foundation of the original Dynasty Warriors games. <laughs> Again, comparing it to, uh, to to Zelda in this case, which would be like apples and oranges, so they had to somehow like combine both together to make this thing work. The internal communication between Toy Tecmo, uh, Koei Tecmo and Nintendo regarding making an action-oriented uh, Zelda game here. Granted, I don't know Japanese, but I can somewhat understand like a certain phrases here. I wish I could speak it fluently. I guess it's just way of saying that uh, we've, we've uh, based this game around Breath of the Wild and all the mechanics and I hope you enjoyed and thank you very much. I guess this concludes the whole scenario here. Like, thanks for, you know, thanks for, uh, for, for being here and presenting the, the game. Thank you all for watching. Well, I guess that about covers it. Uh, from, from my understanding of the presentation, there's going to be like a, a special bundle like a sort of a pre-order bundle regarding, um, you know, just the game itself, um, that little uh, blanket, some kind of like a portrait of the, the actual cover of uh, Age of Calamity. But you know, like I said, m missed opportunity there because um, could have at least sold the scarf as part of the bundle. They could have sold the the soundtrack as well. But whatever. 
anyway, that was an interesting uh, look on the Hyrule Warriors. And remember to support the official release on the Nintendo Switch. And until next time, take care, guys.